Good evening and welcome to Sports Federation TV. I'm your host, Alton Davids. As you know, the Sports Council is uh, alive and active within Western Province, and this is the voice of the Western Province or Cape Town Sports Council. The aim of the show is to promote all aspects of sport, not only coaches, athletes, but administrators, and we aim to get people active in sport across the Western Cape, and more particularly in Cape Town. We talk to a range of different uh, folk. All every week we choose three or four different codes of sport. Of the 73 codes of sport that's uh, registered within South Africa, codes like boxing, badminton, weightlifting, car racing, athletics, uh, softball, to name but a few. Today's show is quite interesting. We're chatting to a young man called Irafan Abrams who talks about his life as, an, as a runner, as an educator, and the sustainable changes he's made within his community. We also talk to uh, the folk of Cape Town Softball. We talk about their initiative in partnership with the Department of Culture, Affairs and Sport. And we also talk to some young ladies and a young man will tell us about a great motor car event happening this weekend at Kilani. So don't go away. we got lots in store for you this evening. But before we get there, Irafan, are you well? I can't complain. No, all the better for being here. And thank you once again for having me on your show. It's been a long time since you've been here. Welcome back into the hot seat. Yeah, I say um, there must be something in the air where we come from because uh, people kind of say Alton doesn't get any older and um, so don't you. So maybe it is the good air where we come from, Alton. Uh, either that or I, I shave my head so you don't see the grey. I, I don't know what's your excuse. <laughs> oh, absolutely nothing. Just, um, you know, we remember that um, we can't do anything besides help from uh, the Lord above. And uh, um, when, we, when you realise that, Anything else is possible. Absolutely. Irfan, it's been a while since you've last been here. Yeah. Take us through briefly who you are and what you currently do before uh, we get to all the sporting aspects. <laughs> well, I suppose uh, once again, where we come from, we were flooded with every sporting code possible and um, you had to just choose which one you, which direction you wanted to go. Um, I'm an educator at Rocklands High School. Um, I teach English and um, uh, involved with the sporting activities at the, at the school. Um, I love education, I love teaching to bits. Um, uh, teachers, I think, are, 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 are people that um, should be, be looked up to and I have fantastic colleagues and people, especially in the Mitchell's Plain area, and I bet um, if you get to interview them, Elton, you lay your stories for a lifetime, especially with sport is concerned. Uh, five years ago, we took on a, an initiative where we wanted to raise awareness um, to do with um, sport as well as um, a project at our school at Rockland Side that we wanted to, to complete. That was the first initiative. But then when things started moving, um, we wanted to help as many uh, schools and community projects within uh, various communities how to raise much needed funds. But we wanted to do it through sport because that, that was our life. That's what kept us off the street, if one wants to use that old cliche, that kept us focused in, in what we wanted to do. And we wanted to show that sport is that vehicle that can, can, can be a positive role model in any youngster's life. And as a Husserl say, oh, maniki, but no, uh, we, we're not getting any younger. I fell in love with, with running, mm. um, which wasn't the case before. You think of every sporting code besides running because it's too long, Elton. Um, fell in love with running and I felt that running was the vehicle that we were going to use to raise awareness in with certain projects and that's how the million rand challenge um, was was born we took on a five-year project we wanted to run one major marathon per year um, and, and that's um, London New York Chicago um, Berlin and London and for a Kotsuki that um, never even did any real marathons to, to think like that many people thought no, it's not gonna happen but like I said, if you believe in something and you, and you have good people around you, um, then anything is possible. And here we are, five years later, we set ourselves the target of raising a million rand for underprivileged schools. We've raised um, uh, up and, uh, just over 1.6 million rand sure. for various schools from as far as um, Belhar to Athlone, Mitchell's Plain, um, too many schools to mention. And every year we had a beneficiary from an old age home, Beitulaman in Weinberg, we had help cancer organizations, LOFOB in Grosse Park, mm -hmm. and you know the wonderful work that LOFOB does and them in getting involved with sport, the blind cricketers that are there. Um, they do and cycling as well. Of course. Tandem cycling, the yeah. other friends of the blind. And, the uh, yeah. and then also um, we've now dedicated to running at least one um, 10 kilometer race per month with a, a blind runner and John van Schaalbeek, um is my partner. Um, you know what, he's 60, Elton, but he runs like a 30 year old. He's an amazing guy. And just to see that smile on his face, 
That's what the running does. And um, we see. That's what sport does. Never mind running. Yeah. I, Irfan, l let's pause there. Tell us what it's like to run with a bl uh, to to be the pilot of a blind or a visually impaired athlete. It's um, it's mind blowing. Um, you know what? The first time we ran together, um, and sometimes there's just a synergy that one cannot um, speak about, in, in, and you cannot get to the grips with it. It was like um, it was a, a partnership made in heaven. Um, it wasn't easy for me, but I must tell you a, a quick story. Our first race we ran was a five-kilometer race, and I think what stood out for me was John actually telling me, Irfan, watch out, there's a car coming. Um, behind we need to be on the left hand side and I'm like John um, I'm your eyes I don't see anything and you know what in turning um, turning around it was a car coming speeding along so his senses have, have just gone a level higher than what mine is and and we work together there's times he, he likes to run a bit more freely than when we are, are, are attached on the arm but an amazing experience and and money can't buy that and, and, and that's what people misunderstand about visually impaired folk, is that their sense of touch, feel, smell, hearing is heightened by 10 to 15 percent to compensate for that as a sense of protection. Let's take a look and see the footage of Irfan out in New York. City Marathon in 2011 when he started a special fundraising project running one major marathon per year while raising money for underprivileged schools in his home country. In the fifth year of his project, he has raised more than 1.7 billion rand. Irfan, what's it like going to run an event overseas? I mean, most people just can picture running in Cape Town and know what it's like to run in South Africa, as an example. For you to go overseas, someone coming from the Cape Flats going over to run in New York, what was that like? It, it's an amazing experience. And yeah, I must say, I carry every top runner of, um, you know, that never had the opportunity to go and run in these major marathons overseas. I can mention so many coming from the Cape Flats who if they had the opportunity, I bet they'd have thrived. Um, I, I carry all of them and all our local clubs that have, you know, running has, has just sprung up and it's out of control, especially in the Western Cape. And yeah, like you think of Lion of Africa, you, take, you think of Top Form that's been there for years, Omi Dry, um, ARD. Uh, these clubs don't come, come, come cheap. And look at Nantes in mm. Bridgetown. So these are the people that, that support me in the sense of oh, wishing me well when I go away. And I carry them on my shoulder. You go there and you, you have them there in, in, in spirit with you. And that helps a lot. Um, I think the footage that you just saw was the opportunity, being given the opportunity to be the South African flag bearer. <laughs> but we were extremely well received and um, it gives you goosebumps um, especially this year going um, uh, we, we wanted to finish our project where it started mm. and it started in New York 2011 it's 2015 the project has, uh, has come to an end and we wanted to end it there and how fitting uh, was it to be given the honor to be the South African flag bearer and um, meeting the likes of uh, Wilfred Kipsang, last year's winner, Spike Lee was the ambassador, um, Paula Ratcliffe. And like I said, they wanted to know more about me than me wanting, being so excited to want to know about, uh, about their life stories. So I think um, it, it keeps me humble. It keeps me grounded that one cannot get ahead of yourself because um, yeah, I'm going to try and raise awareness and funds for underprivileged schools and um, Islamic Relief, the NGO that works internationally. Um, they've been there for five years, so we're trying to support them as well. Um, being given that opportunity, man, it, it, it's just humbling. And, and, and to think that you started with a simple project of uh, raising running mm. shoes at traffic lights. Yeah. Remember that little project? <laughs> oh, it's small things like that. And um, that, that just keeps you, keeps you going. Mm. 
and to say that um, the sky's the limit. And here we want to speak to you know young people who have ideas and who think out of the box. Don't limit yourself. I never ran anything further than five kilometers. And I think you can be able to, to play squash at that level. You didn't need to run. <laughs> run no, when, we, when you played squash, it was run, get to the tee. And that's it. And that's it. <laughs> when uh, the coach um, had said, look, we're going to do some stamina building. That's the thing you dreaded. And here you fell in love with it. You've seen the, the, the spin-offs that it has. And with your permission, I mean, it's just not a running project now. Mm. We've... Um, We've paid with, um, with feeding uh, people who work in the community, w with feeding schemes, um, it's a group in, in Mitchell's Plain, and we feed so many people on a weekly basis. There's the project where we send one talented high school football player who matriculate, who's above average um, in, in academics, but we, we would like to play football um, uh, on a higher level uh, and come and, 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 and uh, also link it to academics. We send one away every single year wow. to Lindsay Wilson University. And if you follow their, uh, their progress, South Africa features highly um, in, in there. And there's reading programs. There's um, doing um, social work within communities. This is all because of the running project. And people have been amazing how they've um, come on board and assisted. And it's not just about money because the money, the best part of it, we don't have a bank account, Elton, where people deposit money and we distribute. No, we get people to work with the underprivileged schools and the schools themselves. It's an empowering project. The more they put in, the more they get out of it. And um, I mean, um, like I said, we can just thank the Lord above as to how successful this has really become. Irfan, we're gonna unpack some of those projects in a minute. Let's take an ad break, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Federation TV. If you've just tuned in, we're chatting to Irafan Abrams, an educator from Rocklands High who's gone out and done an amazing five-year journey where he ran five marathons on five different continents almost. Almost. <laughs> almost, eh? Yeah. And now you're back yeah. over and above all of that and you're still doing good work. Tell us one or two of the highlights of the projects, let's say for this year, that's... Um, if, I, if I can start right at the beginning and then touch on, on this year. I think um, a school like um, uh, Ribic Street Primary, I just want to highlight them. I mean, there's a BBA primary and people have an idea that they've got money, that it's not things have changed. Um, you know, they serve the community from Athlone and we talk about Fahis mm. Karal, the informal settlement, they all there. So they need funds and, and this, the principal is an amazing guy, wants to make fantastic changes. Sport is one of the, the, the big um, uh, go-to um, events where they try and get kids. They've raised almost 200,000 Rand Elton sure. through this project to help them with the um, work that they need mm. to do at school, put in lights, help with their, 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 their facility over there. Ribic Street Primary, in the poorest of the poor areas in Belhar, everybody, all of us go to uh, diligently, every year we go and watch the, the Metropolitan Premier Cup. You drive past the school, you don't give it a look in because um, it's so such a poor area. Yeah. But you drive into the school, you see a group of educators that want to make a difference. Mm. And that's the safety of, this, of the kids at school. They never raised more than 10,000 Rand um, ever at a fundraising project. They've taken the project on two years in a row. They have gone above every expectation. Nice. First year, 52,000 Rand. This sure. year, they've raised close to 60,000 Rand using the running project to, to facilitate what they need. So that's one of the highlights. Other one I, I spoke to you about, working with LOFOB, Heidi at LOFOB, working with the blind, um, getting to see what they, they need. So I would never have known had it not been for this project, the old age home, the cancer. We're mm. still involved. Dragon boat rating, racing, we're involved with Western Province, dragon boat thing. They've been fantastic to, to us. And getting to see why young ladies who's had, um, um, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 that's got uh, breast cancer, how they use dragon boating to, to try and strengthen um, uh, the, themselves in, in, in working and, and fighting the, the, the cancer amazing group of people and they inspire inspire me and um, this year was what we called um, the five challenges project we were going to do five extreme um, uh, sporting codes and, and and events in order to raise awareness because it was the fifth year it started with the august cycle tour and i don't know if you were involved in it and you shortened it uh, for us this, <laughs> this, this year that gave us I, a blessing I, no, no, I didn't do that. 
<laughs> so I rode in a tandem with my, my, my 11 year old son, which was amazing because um, I don't get an opportunity to work with my, my own kids yes. per se, and that's the sacrifice we make. So that was amazing. Islamic Relief were fantastic. They gave us kit and mm -hmm. we had people involved there. Then from there, I qualified to do my first um, ultra marathon, which was the Two Oceans Ultra Marathon, yes. and got to complete that. That was an amazing day. And um, Central Athletic with Line of Africa, Iteko, and some other athletes, they then took up the challenge as well. They dedicated their Two Oceans race um, to raise at least 5,000 Rand to um, Islamic Relief, which was the beneficiary. Yeah. And from there, Alton, uh, can you believe it? Decided to take on the Comrades Marathon. Crazy, <laughs> man. In the, same, in the same year, qualified. Don't ask me anything about the Comrades because it's just a blur in the sense that um, 88 kilometers, you're praying more than what you're running <laughs> just to finish. Yeah. And we got to finish. Um, that was the main, main thing. And that is an experience on its own. From there, we did Boston, which is the most prestigious in the sense of qualifying. Yes. We, did, we got to do Boston, and then we finished it with the, with the largest marathon in the world, which is New York. And in that, we were trying to help a young girl. Um, uh, she, uh, her father started an organization called um, Brave Little Hearts. She's got a congenital heart um, deficiency, Dakira Matthews. And with that, we're highlighting other, other kids with the same uh, condition, highlighting them. But ultimately, Islamic Relief, has, uh, I've become an ambassador for them. And we were trying to assist them because the, we work with the orphans, mm. we work with the less fortunate, and the monies that we raise goes straight back into those projects. And we just want people to, to, to come out there, go to Lansdowne, get involved, or contact Brave Little Hearts. And your one rand, that's the thing that counts. And Alton, the sky's the limit. And I'm, I just say, um, just shukran, it's, 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 it's humbling. And I'm not going to cry on your show because that's <laughs> the, you'd love me to do that. But um, I, I'm going to be strong over here and, and not cry at all. Okay, let's take a, <laughs> let, let's take a, let's take a turn. Okay. Th how many medals do you have? I mean, you've been involved in so many, so many events. And over this past five years, yeah. how many medals do you think you've collected? Um, you brought a sample. <laughs> I brought, I brought I, the, major, the major ones. And I think um, um, this, is, this, is the, this is the good one, the big one. Which this is, is 2015. Yeah. And the middle has gone even bigger. I'd like to believe it's gold. <laughs> it's gold <laughs> because it's you gold. started and you finished. Of course. And then we've got um, Boston. And um, you know why I say that so many of our previously disadvantaged athletes would, would die for, for this is that at my age, to qualify for Boston on your own, you need to run a sub three hour 20 marathon wow. to, to run 45 and over. And um, I think I gave my age away on air. <laughs> But this is this is this is fantastic. London was superb. Mm. Um, you know, teaching and living in London, going back there, and 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 running the London Marathon, it was amazing. Um, we got to work with um, some of the the students that came to Mitchell's Plain and work with Keith Mayer with his MITS yes. program. Um, they hosted us in 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 Holland to run the Amsterdam Marathon. That's a fantastic story, and they are still contributing mm. to um, the kids um, in in Mitchell's Plain. And then we've got um, Chicago, amazing, and then um, London. Um, every marathon is special. Uh, I think you as a runner would also know, and people who are, are hoping and scared of doing a marathon, I was no runner mm. of any note. But just to take on that challenge and knowing that you're challenging your body, but for a good cause, yes. that's what makes it um, so much special. And I think if I couldn't, can do it, Anybody can do it, Elton. Um, we've got fantastic 59-year-old. Um, I just met a lady, and um, she decided that before she turned 60, she wants to do a marathon. Fosia Jacobs, she just ran the Winelands, and she did it with wow. her daughter. Amazing story. Yeah, definitely. In closing, where to from here for you? Um, I think you'll be the first to, to know um, if we could do a project of, 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 of this nature and um, have so many people benefit mm. from it then I think that um, other people who have done something similar, we'd like to do and follow in these footsteps because we can see that it has um, so many benefits. Mm. Uh, it could be Kilimanjaro, it could be Base Camp Everest, uh, it could be Elton and Fani doing a, a cycle journey from Cape Town to Cairo, you never know. Who knows? <laughs> Sky's so, the limit, as you say. So just from me, thank you very much to you and everybody out there that supported the, the project. 
we've had our ups and our downs, but we'd like to talk about the ups more than the downs. And um, I'd just like to say thank you once again for the opportunity. And um, you never know. But I'd like to leave with um, the, the, the little saying that we go. And um, that's run this, this, this campaign, is that nothing can be done without um, your spiritual intervention, be it um, Allah, be it God, be it the Lord. It, it's the same for everybody, but I'm just an ordinary teacher trying to do something extraordinary. And, and you've done an amazing work, not just with yourself, but the impact that you've had on hundreds, maybe even thousands of people, not just in the community where you come from, but in the muni community within South Africa and the community across the world for all those medals. Thank you, Irfan. Thank you. I told you I'm not going to cry out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take an ad break and when we come back, we'll chat softball. See you now. Welcome back to Sports Federation TV. If you've just tuned in, you've missed an interesting segment with Irfan Abrams. Uh, we chatted about his life and the involvement that he's made and the commitment and the benefits that he has achieved as an individual in sport. We now turn our attention to, to the fairer sex. Are you there, you well? <laughs> I'm all right, Elton. Thanks. How are you? Good, good. Mr. Nuna Siridin, you well? It's the fairer sex. Yes, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> you got the good hairstyles. It's <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm fine. Thank you. With, uh, Cape Town Softball is embarking on an exciting adventure. Tell us a bit about that and the yeah. partnership that you have with this young lady and her department. Cape Town Softball was obviously approached by this young lady. Um, to be the first step in the 16 days of activism and as you know the Cape Town official we jumped for the opportunity because our sport is basically 85% female. Mm. And, and wha what is the, 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 the plan? Do you have a project plan? How is all of this going to unfold? Well it's a big day on the 28th of, um, of February, of November which is next week and Saturday and it basically starts off with our little youngsters playing early morning but then we have activities in parallel to that. We will stop for a certain time when the MEC will be present and some other dignitaries will be present. So it's just a big day of promoting this major event in our country actually. What kind of activities will you be doing? There's going to be speakers um, that had the personal experiences of, of abuse. Um, the Lansdowne Police SAPs, they involved, the Lansdowne Community Police Forum are involved. So there'll be a other activities as well. We probably have some music um, just to keep things going. But the idea is to get people involved and to, so that they know what this is all about. You know, mm -hmm. we all read the papers all the time, but we need to teach it from a young age. <coughs> and I think that's the reason we are really and, and our officials opted to have it in the morning instead of the afternoon, you know, get them taught of this menace from a young age yep. already. But I, I think people need to understand that uh, abuse is not only physical abuse. Um, mm. You get a range of other abuses and people mm, need to sure. be conscientized to the fact that you need to speak up about it. Yes. Um, and you speak to someone in confidence whom you trust. Um, and that's the key. Avila, what's your involvement in all of this? Uh, partnering with, with, the, with uh, Cape Town Softball? Softball. I've identified them as Mr. Noor mentioned that 85% is predominant about women and girls and uh, I've come across this um, 16 days of activism in terms of approaching them and what's exciting is he mentioned that in terms of the program we also have the marathon aerobics that's going to take part on the day whereby we creating this healthy awareness and we're taking people out of the mindset of you know we've been abused and um, they did um, get maybe affected some somehow emotional and physical so that um, it's going to be the two hour session part of the program whereby we're going to do aerobics yes we do have um, our main speakers like the MEC will be part of that mm -hmm. and what's exciting where I did also approach the um, Fancy Pigeons Federation whereby they're going to bring the concept of releasing the pigeons after the MEC speak and then I think she's also going to uh, hold one pigeon just to release and that will symbolize in terms of peace and um, it's also biblical in terms of um, Noah and the ark and releasing the pigeons. Yes. So with the 16 days of activism we want people to, to, to start also the communities to, to start fighting this ab abuse on women and girls and to eradicate the violence on women and girls. And, 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 and it, it's a big step in our country to be doing this on a regular basis. I mean, we do it every year. Mm. But not people take 
a step back and realize that it's it's something that's necessary and something that's not spoken about until this time of year. Yes. Yeah. What, what kind of other activities would you be doing as Cape Town Softball throughout well, the year to try and... Okay, in, in addition to what Avela said, we, the Community Police Forum, they've got three people lined up to speak. Because when we talk abuse, we only think of hitting a woman and, you know, it can be the other way around, yep. by the way. But we're only thinking of uh, physical assault. But there's, there's three people coming in who has rape, been raped, one being abused by the husband. So they all speak as because they've got the personal experience. Yes. So that's a brilliant um, relationship we have with the community police forum. A and the reason why Lansdowne Police is because it's being held at Turfel. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we always work with the precinct of Lansdowne because Turfel is in the yes. Lansdowne precinct. We always work with them, Youth Day as well. So yes, we the activities, yes, they'll be softball, naturally, um, but our softball is from four years old that mm -hmm. morning. You know, we, our, our peewees that will take with, be playing in parallel to this uh, occasion are four, year, four to seven, you know, and then followed by your T-ball. So we really want to showcase, but the peewee is not going to listen to speeches. Yes. You know, so get the activity going and get the speeches going, and we hope that every single softball member, male or female, attend this function. Yeah. And being on the show, we hope that everybody that's watching the show tomorrow will also be, be there next week mm -hmm. on Saturday. But also over and above that you have a, a captive audience and the parents who come and support these kids. Correct. I mean, uh, on a Saturday you go to Turfel and there are hundreds of parents coming to support their kids. Correct. And, and that's a great opportunity yeah. to, to, to showcase, to showcase yeah. and, and to link it all yeah. together. No, that's true. Um, parents don't come and watch the Super League players anymore, but on a, the grandparents, the aunties, yes. they're all there in the morning when mm. the little ones play. So the, the timing and, okay. and the relationship that, that's taking place here mm. is perfect. Instead of mm. going on the grand parade and just inviting people, yes. yeah, it's linking in with actually actual activity of mm. little young girls. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Avili, what else has, has Department of Cultures Affairs got planned or linked with uh, other federations coming up on this period? Uh, we're also on the fourth to the 5th of December, it's four, five, six, yes, up until the 6th of December 2015. We're doing the CAMS um, Basketball Girls Camp, which is going to take place in the Western Cape um, Sports School in Case River, and where they're going to be taught in terms of leadership and life skills. So that will also be taking place during that period. And I'm also supporting the Southern Cape Golf in terms of um, procuring um, apparatus for them, like golf t-shirt and also donating the awareness rebounds on the day but as it's taking place from the 25th and it's going on because they're targeting different clubs within the district so there's a lot of activity that you know that's happening in sport during that period yes but i can only be on the cape town softball and also the western cape basketball because okay. they're based in this region yes so i'll Maybe I'll go drop the things in, in SWD for Southwest District. Okay. No, what else is happening in Cape Town Softball other than that? And, and how do you plan to promote this um, 16 Days of Activism concept? Not just the events, but the, the message behind it through softball yeah, look, over the we, next we, season. We actually smoothened out nicely now when, as an association. And we can now concentrate mm. on these kind of activities. And we've already grown after we lost sat here. Yes. Uh, it's amazing how Sobol has grown because of the positivity. Mm. So if you can link the positivity of, of the Sobol fraternity now to things like 16 days of, uh, you don't know, we can just continue to grow. Mm. The parents will take a liking to what we're doing. The parents will then feel free to bring their kids to come play. I've got two grandchildren playing in opposite camps, for yes. example. Brilliant. Yeah. But because of the positivity that's mm. now generated within the Cape Town Sobol, um, I can only see us grow more mm. and then get, get more involved in 16 days, Youth Day, although Youth Day is outside our season, but Swabo last year was involved in Youth Day so we can get this yes. going all the time and obviously grow all the time. By the way, Swabo is going to be played on the 28th, the afternoon, out at Bishop Lavis. So the first time we have to go outside mm. Turfall because of the growth as well. So. And that's great because then it's, it's community involvement and it's taking Swabo back to, to where the clubs are, which yeah. potentially is the next step to growing softball. The good thing about this, we are we are not forced to do we are forced to do it because of the growth. Yes. 
it's not that something, yes, we always wanted to decentralize softball, but now we're at the stage where men must play on a Friday night as well because of the growth, mm. and we have to go and play out at Bishop Lavers and hopefully out in the southern suburbs because of the growth. So it's forced by means of our growth, and I think mm. it's... Uh, well done to softball. Yeah. Avile, mm. something else that you, we're going to move slightly off the beaten track, something else that you're involved in is the arbitration and, and dispute resolution. Just give us a little snippet of, of what that's about, because people don't know about it, and federations are obliged to have it as part of their constitution. Yes. Why would they need to be having this clause in their constitution? You know, Elton, the idea is to take sport out of court, because now you find federation disagreeing with certain matters, and we've got the Western Cape Sport Arbitration Forum that consists of 10 commissioners, and the chairperson of that um, body is advocate Andre Osterhazen. So uh, we urge all the federation within the Western Cape to insert arbitration clause. And, but we're also having um, the drive in terms of mediation because we believe that you first need to mediate before you arbitrate. So um, that's one of the key um, concepts that we're running throughout the region. So whereby we run um, workshops in terms of how you act as the mediator and try to resolve um, the dispute within two parties, failing which, obviously, you need to follow certain channels before you get to the department. There's a sport council, there's a federation, there's a sport council. First, you need to exhaust uh, internal mechanism before you drop the dispute or the matter on my desk. Definitely. And I think people need to understand that if you have a dispute within your club, you deal with it at club level first. Yes. Then you go to your federation, then you go to your sports council, and then you come to the Western Cape. The Western Cape. Because that's the, uh, the p exactly as you say. Because people tend to have a problem in their club and they want to jump and bypass space, everything. So, yeah. It comes to this uh, arbitration forum and advocate who says, uh, yes, go all the way back. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and that's time wasting yes. and, and disputes the, uh, and gets the whole issue out, thrown out of, co out mm. of court, as it were, because you wasted everybody's time. Yeah. Mm. In closing, Noah, give us the final details of the event. No, I'm just chuffed about the event. It's on the 28th, which is next week on Saturday, um, starting at 8.30 already in the morning. Um, and we will probably run till about one o'clock mm -hmm. because just after that our adults start warming up and preparing for the senior games. But if comes, uh, we probably will have, we'll have a little stage there, we'll have Coca-Cola involved, there'll be sweaters, there'll be That's meal all packs, all those things involved. So th it'll, there will be activity. Mm -hmm. If we find that we want to continue on the one side where we're having this while the big games are on, that's also fine. Yes. It depends on, on having the people there. Yeah, so we look forward to it. It's actually next week, um, not tomorrow, next Saturday. The 28th at Turfall. Yeah. And the nice thing also, Old Michal is partnering with the event. Mm. So they'll... To be blue, be white and green. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you for your time. We'll uh, come and support your event and uh, you. give some feedback. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Let's take an ad break and when we come back, we'll be chatting Cape Al Drivers. See you now. Welcome back to Sports Federation TV. If you've just tuned in, you've missed uh, the lion's share of the show. However, we do have something that's also exciting that's happening this weekend. We're showcasing the Cape Hull Drivers car racing. And some of you may remember it from the good old days of the Goodwood Showgrounds where it was predominantly all on gravel. And now Cape Hull Drivers for the last hundred and how many years have moved to Tar? Franco, uh, are you well? Yes, I'm very well yourself. Good, good, good. Um, how long has Cape Hull Drivers been on Tar? From 94, we went over from uh, Goodwood Showgrounds to Kalani Oval, the engine oval as we call it. Yep. And we've been there since. I mean, there's a lot of people that thought we're going to stay there for a year, two seasons. And look, we're still there. It feels like a hundred years that you've moved over from, from, from gravel to, to tar. Uh, obviously because of Grand West uh, building there. Has, has the participation grown over the years? Uh, I can tell you in the last two years, um, the club, the KPL drivers, been, there's so much uh, potential uh, new members are joining, new drivers like yourself. Mm. I, I didn't even know you were a bloody TV presenter, <laughs> really. And we're growing, as you can see, these youngsters, uh, uh, youngster next to me yeah. and the other one that will come. It's all kids that started when they're 10, 12, 13 years old. That's in classes and that's for the future. That's our people or racing drivers that we need for the future of our club and overall maybe one day Grand Prix, who knows? And, and, I, th and I think the key is that it's 
an affordable motorsport opportunity because I think that certainly that's what got me into into the stocker racing as it's commonly called is that it's an affordable activity for Joe public you don't have to have a souped up modified car to go and have fun on the track no not at all as you with your Opel I mean it's a standard clubman's car you're there you're enjoying yourself and the same with the mini class the youngsters that we're trying to get into motor racing you can buy a mini uh, race ready mini for about five grand to ten grand and you'll be in the first three uh, uh, every night you can win the race with that and you know well, what's so nice with our sport and especially with the KPL drivers our sponsors you know if we didn't have sponsors there wouldn't be any racing in all racing that you see um, even at our uh, track uh, on Saturday you will see all the sponsors their names will be named I can't name all of them but to them, I, I want to say a big thank you, and they know who they are. And there's a lot of people behind the scenes, the committee, and our, especially our drivers. I mean, if it's not for them, they won't be any capable drivers. Definitely. Talk about drivers. Michaela, how old are you? I'm actually 15 now, and yeah. 15, and you racing for how many years? I've, well, this year's my fifth year. Um, I started when I was 10 on my birthday. My dad got me a car. <laughs> Was that your birthday present? Yeah. Did you know it was coming? No. Well, it all started when I was like, um, Dad, I really want to race. Like, my brother's car is a joke. Yes. And um, then after that, he started teaching me how to drive in my mom's car. And it, like, took me 10 minutes. And then afterwards, yeah, started. And then the night came and I saw the car. My mom's like, you have to start driving. Oh, my dad's like, you're going to race now. I'm like, yes. more weird. <laughs> yeah. But I only did two eats my first race because I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now, do you enjoy racing? Yeah, I love it. Um, well, last season I came second overall, which okay. is like biggest achievement. Yes. And um, I love it so much. It's one of the best. I mean, yeah. I was born with it. <laughs> born into the family of racing. Let's take a look at the footage of the past uh, event. Let's check it out.
see uh, stock car racing is fun, active, and then loads of activity that happens all the time on the track. Michaela, did you do you enjoy racing? Obviously. Why wouldn't I? It's like exciting, mind blowing, blood pumping, awesome. Would you do any other sport? No. Why not? No, I don't know. I, I just think like racing is like way different to any other sport. Like um, racing, there's like more, I don't know, action, like, and they are actually risking your life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're risking your life because you're too hot. With, very safe. Very with safe. her, with Kiara, yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah. Are you ready for the foot to foot tomorrow? I'm not sure. I think because yesterday practice, I don't know, but... We'll see. I'll test the car maybe tomorrow again. But if not, then we'll see. Hopefully. Good operator. Good luck for Saturday. Tomorrow, we'll see you on the track. Thank you. Let's take an ad break and when we'll come back, we'll chat more KPL drivers. See you now. Kiora, you well? Yes, thank you. How long have you been racing? Um, I, this is my second season. And are you enjoying it? Very much. What kind of car do you race? I race the minis, A102. Why a mini? Um, well, I think between the youngsters, it's a very competitive sport and you get to meet a lot of new people and it's obviously experience for the future. And how long have you l are you physically driving? I know you're racing for two years. How long before did you learn how to drive? Um, I started racing last year, June. So I started practicing about February, March. And you got it all waxed and you in the top 10. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and is it competitive in that top 10? Uh, very. There's a lot of competition, a lot of very good drivers, but it's all for the fun. Definitely. Topis, take us through the ca different categories within uh, CHD so people understand that it's minis or one class. Yeah, the minis for now for the youngsters. Then you get your V8 class. And there's a new class that also started, the Lexus class, where my son is also taking part in so he also comes from minis and it just shows you it's good for the kids i mean you know the main thing why we are, why i did it for my kids is for the day when they get their driver's license they go on the road you know they know it will be safe for them to go on the road and that they won't go if somebody's next to them try and touch the guy because they know speed will kill do it on the track where it's safe to do yeah okay so we've also got the 6060 class which is very competitive and um, there's also the 2.1s and they also started a new class now it's a six cylinder class we don't have to go to go what's uh, um, drifting and that these guys will give you a show tomorrow evening like you won't believe definitely there's a guy Zach Grunewald I mean he's crazy justice he's also crazy yes. and we're also starting now the uh, hot rod class uh, thanks to Zahn Ferrell and um, um, what's his name um, yeah, now I, I can't remember his name, but they've started this club. Now there's going to be guys from uh, Tigerberg Raceway. There's guys going to be from Klein Plassi, Bredasdorp. I'm telling you, you're going to have fun tomorrow evening. If you're not at Kalani tomorrow evening, <laughs> you're going to miss a lot of fun. And I'm telling you, it's bring the family, kids under 16, all free. It's the only place in the Western Cape where you can go watch racing, where you can bring your kids in for free, 60 rand an adult. Bring your brides. Bring your toppy. Your X, Y, and Z. Yeah, and, and all of that, yes. And come and watch us. And even, Elton, you're going to give the people a show. <laughs> you, a TV star. We've got Ferdinand Raba, yeah. which is a TV star. We've got all these kids are racing. They're all uh, stars uh, yep. for the future and that. Let's, let's take a look at some of the footage of uh, some of the action you may be seeing this weekend. the likes of Simon and Dented and Renee Lowe. The ball, Ferdinand Harvey! Ferdinand Harvey, he clipped the 26. Actions behind them. Reckon, Beckham and Stackham says, Oh, look at this. Guy up on the inside. It doesn't work. Chris against Dented. Then you got Chris Kennedy and then the other two that were right in there as well. He is a good coach now. And the Carl van Dijk, but they've been hounded now by other small people.
As you can see, there's lots of action that will happen tomorrow night at the Kilani racetrack. As you can see, guys flipping their cars, doing all kinds of things, not intentionally, but it's safe to do it because there's, you have a five-point harness, you have a roll cage, and it's safe. Trappies, in closing, give us one or two highlights, more of this uh, coming event. Okay, this coming event is going to be quite big. There's a lot of money that people donated to the drivers, driver of the day, or this one must take that one out and that. And then you're also going to see a lot of lady drivers. I can just mention their names if you don't mind. Yep. Okay, the one is Michaela van Tone, Chiara van die Kerk, Tasman Camden, Eva Cars Ready, and also Alicia uh, Estra is again the mini class. And then there's also Ter Teresa Abigail Cope, and the dad also race. So it's a family thing. And yes. Nikita Oosthuizen, also in the clubmans, that's going to join you. I think yep. she's going to give you a hiding tomorrow. <laughs> and then the others is Daniela de Sosa. Yep. And uh, Kayla Jones, which won the championships last year in the mini class, she's yes. also in the 1660s. Mm -hmm. And then there's also Mariska Cruiser in the 1660s. Watch this girl. She is trigger happy, just like this one next to me. Yes. And then come and watch, um, they must come and watch you. Just uh, people, there's a white opal. <laughs> if you've got a sponsor for this poor guy, please help him. Even with a tire or a little bit of petrol, please. Yeah, and, and, and I think Trop is the big thing here is that people need to, uh, it, it costs money to, to keep a car going. And as you saw by the footage, all these drivers have some form of sponsorship and just to keep their car going. And it's, it's a fun sport for everybody. Kiara, in closing, you ready for tomorrow? Very. Are you amped mm. to give Michaela a hiding? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> good, good. Trop is, what time does racing start tomorrow? Racing, uh, the gates open at 2. Uh, practicing will start at about quarter past two, half past two, and uh, racing will start at five. F uh, three heats and a final, four hours of racing, you won't get it anywhere in South Africa. Not with the KPL drivers, you get everything. Definitely, lots of action, over 120 cars participating. Come down to Kelani tomorrow, you're definitely in for a, a great evening. All that's left for me to say is thank you for spending time with us this evening. Our show will come on tomorrow morning again at eight o'clock, repeated as well as will be on YouTube under Western Province Sports Council, Fed TV. Watch out for the clips of each show. You can go back, you can watch them. If you've got any news, you've got any highlights, tweet us, Western Province Sports Council. Tweet me, Alton Davis 25 We'll add it to the community diary. Have a fab weekend. See you Friday, 9 o'clock. Cheers.